Hello. How many of you enjoy watching parents play with their young children? I am absolutely fascinated by it. What I'm interested in is how that parent initiates contact with that child, and most captivating is how that child responds back to that contact. I listen to what they're saying or even thinking or singing, and I go like this, I go, peekaboo! Or that clapping game, how about that one? Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, bake me a cake as fast as you can. Play therapists call this first play, or pre-symbolic play. What is happening in first play? A lot. There's a tremendous amount of positive sensory input. There's vocal variety, smiling, giggling, eye contact, and there's touch. What came to the forefront in the 90s is that this type of touch and joyful developmental play is vital to the wiring of healthy neural pathways in the brain. And it is this wiring of the brain that sets up a lifelong ability for us humans to engage in healthy and securely attached, intimate relationships. When we do not develop secure attachments, it is difficult to trust others, show empathy, be self-confident, or deem ourselves as worthy of love. About 25 years ago, I worked in adoption and foster care as a social worker. And I saw firsthand not only the effects of abuse and neglect, but the detriment to children who did not receive those early life, first play, joyful touch experiences. My desire to bring healing to children led to a specialty in play therapy. I was fortunate to train with Dr. Viola Brody, a pioneer in the treatment of early childhood attachment disorders. Dr. Brody believed that children can heal from trauma and become securely attached by going back and picking up what they missed from their earlier developmental first play stages. What I learned is, is that we can help to heal children from trauma and attachment problems by focusing on two common human experiences, joy and touch. Let me show you an example of what I mean by a joyful touch activity with an older child. Let's say I'm meeting a five-year-old for the first time. I greet that child by saying, hello. So, hello, it's nice to meet you. How should we say hello to each other today? Should we shake hands? How about a high five? Maybe our elbows can say hello. I give some examples, and then I just follow the child's lead. Receiving joyful and caring touch releases and that really yummy hormone, the love hormone, oxytocin, and at the same time, the stress hormone, cortisol, goes down. Touch is curative. It really does make us feel better. Even teenagers know how good a hug feels. My son, who is 17 and six foot two, sometimes asks me after a hard day at school, Mom, can I have a hug? <laughs> of course. <laughs> when I give trainings to practitioners on the use of touch in the therapeutic relationship, I'm often asked, well, what about the kids that have been sexually abused? You, you don't want to touch them, do you? And to that I say, well, they are the ones that need the curative power of joyful and caring touch the most. My own awakening to the power of touch came from a former student, Gisela. Years ago, I was teaching a social work play therapy course at a university, and I was showing my students a first play touch activity. Gisela was my partner. Our encounter went something like this. Oh, Gisela, you brought your hands with you today. Should we count your fingers and make sure they're all there? And then it was her turn. Did I mention to you that Gisela is blind? What I received in return was something totally unexpected. 
When she took my hands into hers, I felt a tender warmth, and I immediately relaxed. She touched me with such an amazing sense of presence and awareness. What happened is, through caring touch, a blind woman gave me one of my most profound experiences of truly being seen. Gisela went on to become a pediatric social worker. In her practice with families and visually impaired children, she does the first play touch activities, not with the child, but with the parents. She said that was the only way that her sighted parents could really get how to connect with their child. The cure to power of joyful touch can build connections of all kinds. For years, I also used imaginative storytelling to help children learn how to relax. I would tell a story, and then I would have them envision a beautiful rainbow flowing throughout their whole bodies. And then, one day, I had an epiphany. I call it the Reese's peanut butter cup phenomenon. I merged the two separate therapy techniques together into one single technique, resulting in the form of a children's story for anyone to use. The Magic Rainbow Hug story is a combination of first play touch activities drawn on a child's back, blended with guided imagery, relaxation methods. In this way, a child can imagine and also feel the story. I call this combination of techniques kinesthetic storytelling. A mother who used the story with her two-year-old son, diagnosed with autism, wrote to me that after just one day of using the joyful touch activities, her son had an amazing breakthrough. She said that his eye contact increased by about 40%. He allowed her to hold his hands and to wash them. And most surprisingly, she said he started to cooperate with her directions. And she emphasized, without a battle. There are a lot of young children out there with all kinds of challenges, and their parents are struggling to find ways to help them and connect with them. Kinesthetic storytelling offers a fun, new alternative. When children receive joyful and caring touch, they also learn how to give it as well. Often, parents of the children in my practice report that after experiencing the magic rainbow hug only a few times, their children, as young as age three, begin to start playing parts of the story out on their friends, their siblings, and even their grandparents' backs. Dr. Brody demonstrated that when children gain a sense of a felt self, that this helps them to feel grounded and secure within themselves. And from that place, they're better able to calm and self-regulate their own emotions. It enables them to build secure attachments and to have close and empathetic relationships because they deem themselves as worthy of love. And guess what? <laughs> I have good news for you, too. Research teaches us that the brain has a neuroplasticity where new pathways can be formed at any age. <laughs> if children can experience the curative power of joyful touch, so can you. We will be finishing today with a fun first play touch activity to give everyone here a sample of just what I've been talking about. So I'm going to ask you to please quickly stand up and join hands with your neighbors. <laughs> we will be singing, we will be singing a, oh, I like this here in the middle of the aisle. We will be singing a simple, familiar song. But listen, if you listen to the words, it's really a very profound song. On the count of three, we will be singing, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a drink. Again, but with gusto. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. 
Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now one last time, but slow and soft, and I want you to look around and make eye contact with your neighbors when you do this. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>